Shugs, I got some bad news. Johnny Hardwick, the voice of Dale Gribble, and a writer on King of the Hill, was found dead at the age of 64 in his home in Austin, Texas. Pour the Alamo, raise it up, drink up, brothers, you know how, and spill a drop for Dale Gribble. And don't forget the pocket sand. Now, I wasn't totally convinced at first. After all, it was TMZ who broke the news. Don't you know how many times they've said Tom Kenny died? I thought, hey, maybe the Beast put out a wrong announcement. Maybe Rusty Shackelford was getting his revenge for dying. Or Y2K happened right now. But alas, it's true. So in tribute to Johnny Hardwick, I want to do a video about Dale. A rather short one though. And because I don't really like discussing episodes, unless it's a full-on storyline, I've decided to give my two cents about one of the biggest mysteries in the show. I was tempted to talk about Johnny's death and what that could mean for the revival, but I'd rather let some time sink in before doing anything else. If it helps, he did record a few episodes before his passing. Some people say as many as six, but let's see how it goes. Check it out, Dad. I'm John Redcorn. I don't see it. I'll show you how to do John Redcorn. Excuse us. Hi, I'm Kitty Monk, and I'm here to talk to you about King of the Hill. Or more specifically, Dale Cribble. And I'm just gonna jump right into it and give a little background. Dale is one of Hank's neighbors and one of the main characters. He works as a self-employed exterminator and is probably the funniest character on the block. To put it one way, for most people, Dale's like Todd Chavez, but a lot more likable. Most importantly, Dale's best known for his various conspiracy theories and rampant paranoia. Vikings were the first visitors to, to the moon. Well, I knew that. Why do you think we named our spacecraft after them? Not only that, but there's... the domestic side of things. Dale is married to Nancy Hicks Gribble, a weather girl, an occasional news anchor slash reporter. The news is weird. Nancy married Dale because arguably, Dale can be a charming, loyal, romantic, and a great partner. But after they got married, Nancy essentially became one of those wives who mothers their husbands, as Dale's paranoia and conspiracy theories took over. During season one, Nancy has been cheating on her husband, for well over a decade with Native American New Age healer John Redcorn. Hey baby, how about a couple of beers? Sorry, should gotta go. I got another migraine treatment with John Redcorn. But Kitty, who is John Redcorn? Refer back to the video me and review to death made for context. Nancy was usually able to get away with her affair by lying to Dale and saying that John Redcorn was treating her for migraines. Don't worry, old John R will fix her up just like he does for Nancy three times a week. Ugh, but... Considering how stressed out she can be with Dale, part of me thinks she at first went to John Redcorn for migraines. Who knows? In fact, Nancy and John Redcorn even conceived a son named Joseph John Gribble. Joseph John Gribble, you should be ashamed of yourself. Totally subtle. And despite looking nothing like Dale, outside of the color he dresses in, after hitting puberty, Theo loves Joseph wholeheartedly and sees no trace of Nancy's infidelity. Better yet, he thinks that next to Hank, Jen Redcorn is his closest friend. Really betraying Octavio, dude. And also, Jen Redcorn is gay and or a womanizer, depending on how he feels. I was getting a weird vibe in there. You think he's gay? Clearly, all of those women are his beards. Even though Nancy and John Redcorn parted in Season 4's Nancy Boys, albeit amicably, the consequences of the affair would continue to percolate around the block. In the infamous of Mice and Little Green Men, Dale told Hank that he thought Joseph wasn't his real son. Sometimes I ask myself why I even bother. I mean, it's not like Joseph's even my son. <laughs> Uh, what? Brother, he was an alien, and that's why he can't connect with him. Joseph's real father is... Nancy loves you! An alien! 
What? I recently saw on the Discovery Channel that it takes nine months to make a baby. Well, actually, Dale, yes, it does take nine months, but not nine months after you do the nasty. It's nine months after your last menstrual cycle. Or at least that's what I learned last year. Granted, I don't put it past Dale to keep track of Nancy's cycle. Considering how he withheld intimacy to preserve his life force per bill. Hank and the boys haven't told Dale. Luann hasn't told Dale, or even Peggy. And Bobby might know something, but keeps his mouth shut. Peggy's headache was one of the first episodes to have the affair play out in a serious light. Peggy learns the truth, and after struggling all episode, she finally attempts to tell Dale. Wait a minute, let me get this straight. Nancy? And John Redcorn did something to your dog? Until she realizes how much of a good father Dale was, and that to tell him would destroy a family and break his heart. Hmm. Well, I got two fives. Thanks, Dad. Oh, wait. I found some more. Yeah. <laughs> Can't watch and see no man without milk balls, huh? For Dale's part, he eventually mustered the courage to tell Joseph he was an alien. You're only half alien and at times can be a tad self-absorbed. You missed my damn tryouts and now you're calling me self-absorbed? Oh God. In response, Joseph ran away to Marfa with an unwitting Bobby and Dale and Hank were not far behind. On the truck, Dale began to doubt everything until Hank told him that even if he's not Joseph's father, he is his daddy. He's Mary Poppins, y'all. Okay, but I didn't see the aliens doing that stuff. Any alien can inject someone with his space juice and be a father, but it takes a real man to be a dad. Instead of figuring out the obvious and prompted on by Joseph, Dale thinks that Joseph is his son, albeit one father through an alien turkey baster. Aliens impregnate a mom, that's a given. But isn't it possible the first they abducted you, stole your genetic material, and then used that to create me? Ew. Now, if King of the Hill is known for anything besides the memes, and the politics, and the food, it's the fan theories. Bill is Bobby's real father. Peggy's skydiving accident caused a brain injury, and that's why she's so arrogant. Boomhauer is a government agent sent to watch over Dale. The other major fan theory? Dale knows the truth about Nancy and John Redcorn, but plays stupid. Normally, with these types of theories, I don't buy into the big ones, but that doesn't mean I don't have my own. Like Cotton faked his death and bought a timeshare in Mexico, Maldini forwards his mail, or Topsy is Beavis's grandpa, or Buckley and Dooley are brothers. However, I thought that considering the revival, it would be cool for them to tackle this theory. Now, I will admit there is some basis. Dale bugs his neighbors, he stalks everybody around him, and he records all phone calls, incoming and outgoing. Surely he would know something is amiss, or suspect it, or notice his wife being unfaithful or calling John Redcorn. Meanwhile, unlike Hank and Peggy, he and his wife don't even share a bedroom. They're not even a real couple. Did you know she only sleeps with him on his birthday and Christmas? That's why she gets so depressed around the holidays. Allison Hightower would want your life, Nancy. Nancy also goes on vacations with John Redcorn for migraines. John Redcorn even said in front of Dale, I believe I'm the one who deserves the kicking. I slept with his best friend's wife for 13 years. Yeah, Bill's wife was a tramp, big deal. And let's not forget the episode, The Trouble with Cripples, which showed us that despite being an idiot, Dale can keep up an act for prolonged periods of time, if properly motivated. Nancy thinks the news station is discriminating against her because she just turned 40 and wants a facelift, but the Gribbles can't afford it. So Dale decides to file a lawsuit against Manitoba Cigarettes, the brand he always smokes, saying that because he smoked their brand, his wife's appearance is suffering for it. I know, it's weird. Just roll with it. But the lawsuit goes through, and to gather dirt on Dale, the company sends him a Manitoba singing fish, meant to probe him. A, a, a grotesque flying water beetle. Will you excuse me, Nancy? They're bugging me! My God! To keep them from prying, Dale starts to act like an abusive Jack A, always commenting on Nancy's appearance and essentially gaslighting her. If you do not have context, and even with the context, it's kind of hard to watch. 
Nancy, dearest, your smoke ravaged face is making me nauseous. Would you mind putting this Kroger bag over your head? Get out! But he had done it so well that Manitoba could not find anything of note on him. And Nancy was so affected that she even left Dale. Instead, Manitoba offers to give him more money than the facelift is worth. Like, way, way more money. Gribble, I'm offering you the deal of the century. $75,000. In return, we accept no liability and you keep your mouth shut. Pretty sure it's more than Dale makes in a year. Of course, Dale doesn't take it because he wanted to show Nancy he loved her. Just know he did that the whole episode and it worked out so well that Nancy was ready to sever her marriage. Plus, it's fun to watch certain episodes with the interpretation that he's being a troll. Like when a new female exterminator comes to town and she and Dale are, I hate to say it, birds of a feather and Nancy becomes clingy. You just tell your little friend to go on home. Well, that's not very friendly. I never told you to tell your friend John Redcorn to go home. One episode even had John Redcorn say that Dale was ruining the fun of the affair. Now get inside and start massaging my wife. He's taking some of the fun out of this. Perhaps the most obvious is during the episode, Dale Not Be Proud, when he was woozy from the surgery medication, Dale did say, Nancy, what's red corn doing in our shower? But personally, this aside, I don't buy it. They see the theory that Dale knows, but plays stupid, the same way Johnny Tuchelos does with the theory that Bill is Bobby's real father. Probably not true, but still fun to talk or joke about. And it has a pretty deep basis of evidence you just can't ignore. Besides, the whole joke is that Dale is a conspiracy nut who believes all sorts of outlandish things, but he can't see the most obvious betrayal happening right in his living room. And if Dale was doing all of this to get a rise out of people, surely he would have told somebody, Hank maybe, or even Peggy. Hey Dale, I thought I'd like to take a little of my own advice this morning. Having some waffles, are ya? Like right here, this would have been the perfect chance. And if he's faking, this would put into question his whole relationship with his son. Does he only love him despite John Redcorn? Because if that's true, that's really cruel. Therefore, my view lies more in the middle. As in, Dale both knows and he doesn't know at the same time. To me, Dale is in deep denial which explains all of his theories. It makes way more sense for his character, and kind of like the other theory, there is plenty of evidence for it. We all know that Dale lives in a fantasy world of conspiracy theories to help cope with the real world. Meanwhile, in My Own Private Rodeo, Dale reconnected with his father after over a decade of estrangement. The reason being that on Dale's wedding day, his father kissed Nancy at the reception. Not because of lust or anything like that. Bug is a gay man, but back then he was still closeted. I saw Dale coming. I panicked and grabbed the nearest thing in a dress. Dad? And I am just now realizing Dale's father's name is Bug, and Dale's an exterminator, and he hates his father. Damn it, Freud. No wonder Hank doesn't like you. Now, unlike Hank and the boys, Dale doesn't notice at first that Bug is gay, thinking that Bug's boyfriend is just a boy who happens to be a friend, the same way Joseph and Bobby are friends. While at a fitting, Bug starts to ask Nancy about Joseph, and Dale only overhears part of it. But telling your husband you cheated on him is such an unpleasant conversation. I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life. But I can't do that anymore. And to him, and the fact that Juan Pedro is stated to be Buck's partner, it means that his father is a government agent. Da da da. Are you in love with Nancy? Even when I was married to your mother, I was leading a secret life. My father is a government agent. He told you that? He didn't have to. Totally. I bet Boomhauer's one too. It wasn't until Dale literally saw Bug kissing Juan Pedro at the rodeo that he finally understood 
and when he found out, he was pretty cool about it. But it makes sense for Dale, at that point of time, to still be in denial. How was he supposed to trust his father after everything that happened? He just came back. And the theory only helped him to cope with the realization in a way only he could understand. This a whole interpretation also occurs in the Alien episode. During the episode's start, Bobby and Joseph could not connect with their fathers over interests, but they could connect with their godfathers. This all culminated in each of the fathers attending the other child's respective event, despite knowing what it meant to their sons. And rather than face them, they went to a diner, which is where Dale confessed his fury. Now that Joseph's hit puberty, the differences are impossible to ignore. We don't look alike. We don't have the same interests. Oh, come on. In the diner, I took Dale's words to Hank and the situation at hand is him trying to say, Hank, I've known from the day Joseph was born that I wasn't really his father. I know Nancy cheated on me. Maybe it was with John Redcorn, maybe it was with some other man. But the only way I could look at myself in the mirror, or sleep at night, or keep from jumping off the deep end, was if I convinced myself that somehow I was special, and so was that kid. After all, according to Dale's theory, the only reason Nancy got pregnant was because he was this close to uncovering something major. The aliens knew I was getting too close to the truth. Exactly what truth? I have no idea, but I was close. And he'd be too busy with child rearing to deal with aliens. Later, after the talk with Hank and Marfa, and after getting Joseph back, he changes the theory almost completely, in a way that still keeps him on top, and keeps him from finding out the truth. Recovering, recovering, recovered memory! That's exactly how it went down, which means you are my flesh and blood genetic son! And let's not forget the episode Vision Quest. John Redcorn thinks that Joseph has given in to peer pressure, and is starting to turn into a rotten apple. I saw him unscrewing salt shaker tops at the food court. He ruined an old man's taco salad. Oh, John Redhorn, wait until the later seasons where Joseph turns into an idiot that makes Beavis look like Einstein. He wants Joseph to go with him to Lake Arlen on a vision quest, but Hank objects because how exactly would they explain that to Dale? Because I'm worried about the way Dale is raising my son. Okay, easy there. Joseph is Dale's son. And you have nothing to worry about. So Hank instead takes the boys and Dale on a camping trip, adhering to the rules John Redcorn told him, like don't sleep and don't eat. But Dale is the one who has the vision, not Joseph. Which makes sense. Dale isn't as athletic as Joseph. I never thought I could go this far without food, but we're doing it, right dad? Give us some food, Hank! I'm starving! During the vision, Dale essentially learns that John Redcorn and Joseph are related, and Nancy cheated on him. But instead of seeing it that way, through his own twistic logic, he thinks, I see the buffalo. I see the Indian. I am the Indian. Now, there's many ways to interpret this. Native American spirits are real in the show, and we're trying to warn Dale. Or Dale subconsciously knows the truth and knows something's up, he just doesn't want to admit it. Because for him, ignorance is bliss. And what people don't know can't hurt them. Any other show, I would go with number one. But King of the Hill is probably one of the most realistic Fox cartoons next to Bob's Burgers. So I go with subconscious. Instead, Dale has to believe once again that he's special. I fathered an Indian child, therefore I am an Indian. Wait, but I thought you were Jamaican. That's what Nancy said. Now, one final point I want to go over is why doesn't anybody tell Dale? Even Peggy fought this. For me, it's not the fact that you don't break up a family. Or that Dale would go crazy like he did in Dogdale Afternoon, although that is a possibility. To me, it's the fact that even if you told Dale, even if he walked in on John Redcorn on top of Nancy, he would not believe it, because it would never faze him. Dale, Nancy, and John Redcorn are having an affair. Oh, poor naive Peggy. That's what the aliens want you to think. Dale, I am not a true friend. I'm having an affair with your wife. 
I am aliens, beaming false memories into my brain. How dare you brainwash John Redcorn, my one true friend, and send a clone in his place. To me, if the revival did indeed have an episode of Dale learning the truth, I feel like this would be the route they would take. Everybody would try to tell Dale, but he wouldn't take no for an answer. Or Joseph learns the truth, but decides to play along. Dale might not have been Joseph's father, but he was his daddy. Oh well. I guess I'll end the video by reading this whole fanfic thing. That's where the fury comes from. She cheated. Hank, I knew about Nancy and Judd Rancorn. I knew about them the day Joseph was born. But every day since he was born, I've been taking my revenge. That boy, he loves me, Hank. He loves me. John Redcorn will never get. He'll never hear his boy tell him that. Joseph will go to his grave loving me and never so much as looking in Redcorn's direction. His children, his grandchildren, they'll love me too, Hank. And they'll never know Redcorn existed. That's revenge, Hank. Just like when the former Soviet Union resurrected Lenin to cause the housing crisis in America as revenge. Bye.